their progeny cells, their daughter cells decide not to be in love with each other and they jump into blood and then go to bone marrow and diffusely spread. What has happened to lymphoma? Enter into which phase? Leukemic, Leukemic phase. phase. So what happened? Butter has given rise to milk style. Butter has given rise to milk style. Is that right? So actually disease can start as leukemia and may have a lymphoma mass later on or sometimes disease can start as lymphoma, lymphoma and sometimes it may end up into leukemic phase. That's right. Is that right? Now the definitions which you are putting, is it fitting anywhere here? No. No. Is that right? So leukemia or lymphoma, both of them are neoplastic proliferation of hematopoietic precursor cells, right? And the term leukemia or lymphoma simply mean one thing, that what is the tissue distribution of the disease at presentation when patient comes first time to the doctor? That's right. That's right. Is that right? That when patient has malignancy or hematopoietic precursor cell, right? Is he having lymphoma, leukemia? It really depends on that when patient come first time, present to the doctor, what was the mere distribution, simple distribution of malignant cells in the body? Cohesive mass? Lymphoma. lymphoma. Wide spread? Lymphoma. If milky style? Lymphoma. And if like a butter cake? Lymphoma. lymphoma. Is that clear? Now clear, today clear. Thank God, right? So, in future you should learn that sometimes we say small cell leukemia, for example, there is a term used now in the books, for example, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, oblique, small cell lymphoma. What does, they say this is one and the same disease. This is also lymphocytes, this is also lymphocytes. Right? If they are diffusely involving the bone marrow and jumping into blood, with small cells, this is small cell leukemia, oblique. What is this? Small cell lymphoma. It's a chronic lymphocytic leukemia and small cell lymphoma. Because both of them are same cell, the same cytogenetic abnormality, maybe a similar kind of treatment even. Is that right? Any question up to this? No. Okay, now let's move forward and go into detail. Uh, now, you know the difference between lymphomas and leukemias. Now WHO classification of lymphoid neoplasms. Actually, latest trend, the latest trend, present trend in uh, classifying the neoplastic, classifying the neoplastic proliferations of white blood cell is lymphoid proliferations, myeloid proliferations and histiocytic proliferations. For example, if I say that neoplastic proliferations of white blood cells. The latest concept, right, that we divide basically into three categories. Lymphoid neoplasms, lymphoid neoplasms, right, and then there is myeloid neoplasms, and there are histiocytic, which are derived from macrophages and dendritic cell. Histiocytic neoplasms. Right? They are lymphoid neoplasms, they are myeloid lymphoid. Now, of course, you know, some lymphoid will be leukemic and some lymphoid will be lymphomatous. In the same way, myeloid, some will be leukemic, some will be lymphoma. Depending upon what? Behavior, presentation. Right? The way they spread in the body. Okay. Uh, we are going into detail of lymphoid neoplasia. Right? These we will discuss later. Right? Now when we talk about uh, lymphoid neoplasia, right? When we talk about the lymphoid neoplasia, WHO has, World Health Organization has given a very clear cut way to classify. Previously, different authors had different kind of classification. Now, lymphoid neoplasia, before I go into that type, let's suppose this is the lymphoid precursor cell. Lymphoid precursor cell. Is that right? Now, this lymphoid precursor cell can eventually become B cell or T cell. B cell or T cell. It means that lymphoid malignancies 
can be B cell malignancies or T cell malignancies or a small percentage of this may become natural killer cell natural killer cells these are three types of lymphocytes when we say they are lymphoid malignancies it means they are from the related with lymphoid system lymphocyte so they can be either lymphoid stem cell or you can say lymphoid progenitor cells they can go into B line C B lineage or T lineage or natural killer cell lineage now here I would like to mention another concept what really happens this is the precursor cell what is this precursor cell now it will undergo multiple steps of differentiation then it will eventually differentiate into two lines mainly two lines and it may become mature B cell or it may become yes mature T cells or NK cell is that right yes, now the simple term what are lymphoid neoplasia neoplasia is from the B line B cell or T cell or NK cell system that's it is that right now these these cells are basically when they become malignant we are very much concerned that malignant transformation occur at what stage malignant transformation occur at what stage let me tell you what I mean by stage just imagine uh, this is like a new boy uh, this is a cell from where this is immature cell and this is mature cell this is central cell it is usually in central lymphoid system especially in the bone marrow this goes to the peripheral tissue and especially in circulation is that right so we can call it central cells or peripheral cells we can call it immature cell and mature cell we can call it undifferentiated cell and differentiated cell we can call it rapidly proliferating cell and less proliferating cells because in this series as cells become more and more mature they become more differentiated they become more functional but their capacity to proliferate is usually reduced is that right now this is lymphoblast and this should be lymphocyte because cells which are immature they proliferate rapidly and large rapidly proliferating cells are called blast and cells which are well differentiated and not proliferating much they are called sites they are called sites so we can say there are lymphoblasts and there are lymphocytes is that clear now you imagine this is like a puppy what is puppy you don't know what is puppy small dog small dog it is not dog it's a baby dog you can say right small dogs we can have a full fledged small dog right it's a baby dog is that right actually it's a the story is like puppies that in the central cell let's suppose it is in bone marrow or in the thymus this the thymus of bone marrow is a puppy house there these puppies are produced then normally these puppies with the time should convert into what dogs why not bitches right so what happened they should become adult and mature and and then after that they should jump into circulation am I right so it means these puppies are central and these dog, dogs and bitches will use the term dog right no gender discrimination just imagine bitches are also there so yeah so what I'm saying that the dogs mean well differentiated mature cell and puppies mean immature cells right normally first we talk about normal then we'll talk about abnormal normally these puppy cells we can also call them lymphoblast or puppy cell normally gradually they mature and from immature they become mature cells and from central they become peripheral cells or you can say from puppies they become well defined dogs is that right clear now what really happens in leukemia and lymphoma you know what happened actually these puppies proliferate more normally puppy can give the babies but here the puppies proliferate more but they don't differentiate just imagine this puppy has a wild puppy there's a problem with this puppy what is the puppy this puppy can can multiply and multiply but it cannot become mature so this is a puppy which never convert into dog this is the problem in leukemia 
what is the real real genetic problem in leukemia at genetic level in leukemic cell what happens its genetic operators is disturbed its genetic uh, genetic programming is disturbed normally normally these cells precursor cell should multiply and after certain number of multiplications they should switch off the genes for multiplications and gradually switch on the genes for maturation. differentiation and maturation and they become mature cells which are functional yes. right if B cell they should be able to convert into plasma cell and produce antibodies or if T cell cytotoxic they must be able to attack the tumor cell the foreign cells yes. then they are doggies mature doggies what really happens in leukemia that genetic programming is damaged here and these cells remain alive these cells do proliferate they survive for a long time but puppies always remain puppy they never become doggies this is the problem what happens in leukemias or lymphomas that these cells malignantly transformed cell these simple puppies convert into what what abnormal puppies what are these abnormal puppies? These are the wild puppies. These wild puppies keep on proliferating. They also survive for a long time, but they don't convert into doggies. Yes. What, do, what do I mean? That these wild, transformed, neoplastic cells do proliferate, do survive in the body, but refuse to become adult mature cell. So there will be two problems now. Normally what was happening? Controlled proliferation. Yes. Normally controlled proliferation. And end product was functional cells. Yes. Functional cells. Now with this situation, when this DNA is damaged and cell is transformed into malignant cells, now what happened? These are immature cells which proliferate a lot, but they don't convert into functional cells. Is that right? So, what problems will occur in a patient? A patient who has cell like this, this is the naughty puppy. We can call it wild or naughty puppy is a better. This is a naughty puppy. This naughty puppy say, I don't want to be dog. I don't want to grow up. I don't want to mature. I don't want to do any work. But I keep on increasing my population and I refuse to die. So what will happen? In the body, puppies will accumulate. Which puppies will accumulate? Normal or wild? Wild. So in these patients, when one cell become malignant, one puppy become wild, this puppy babies proliferate, proliferate and more and more puppies. And in this patient, other cells were normal puppies. Gradually, they convert into mature, mature cells. cells. But these wild puppies, number one, they increase their number. Yes. Number two, they kick the normal puppies and reduce the space. They crowd them. Yes. In the bone marrow house is a puppy house. And if they are in the bone marrow house or thymus or wherever, the normal cells will be kicked. Yes. So they will crowd out them physically. Even they will eat all the nutrition. These wild puppies are very naughty puppy right they will eat up the all the growth factors they will be consumed by these yes. and all the nutrition and vitamins and other things what will happen to normal puppy population no. goes down this has happened in leukemia that one transformed cells behave like a wild puppy and this wild puppy keep on increasing its population and when it increases too much fast population its population increases uncontrolled and here it was Controlled and uncontrolled proliferation or over proliferation and over survival. Number one, they proliferate too much, they increase their number. Number two, they refuse to die. Number three, they refuse to become adult and refuse to work. This is the problem in leukemia patient. This is what has happened in a hematopoietic precursor cells. So, what happened to these cells? In this patient, what will happen? If it is happening in the bone marrow, puppies, puppies everywhere. All bone marrow will be diffusely replaced by wild puppies wild puppies everywhere and then lot of wild puppies jump into circulation, circulation. right in the circulation doggies are Suppressed. less and wild puppies are more. more and of course these puppies are not working yes. rather these puppies from the circulation go to different tissues go to liver and spleen and bone many places and then they make more puppies there so his body will be having double trouble number two excess of abnormal cell number two number one sorry excess of abnormal cell and number two deficiency of normal cell is that right so all clinical problems will be in leukemic patients or lymphoma patients the all the clinical problems are come due to two reasons number one excess of abnormal cells 
malignant cells number two deficiency of functional cells is that clear any question up to this now another concept i want to tell that sometimes we say uh, leukemias are acute or chronic. chronic what is the real difference between acute and chronic of course everyone knows uh, but before i go into that i will tell you when these cells are proliferating if they are going to be wild puppy if they are going to be neoplastic cell if they are going to be malignant cell what should happen somewhere there is arrest in differentiation what is there arrest in differentiation now if arrest, arrest in differentiation it has very early stage right then all the early cells which are unable to differentiate further puppies are too small will they do any, any function at all no and they will proliferate very rapidly because cell in the beginning have high proliferation and less differentiation as you go to that line less difference less proliferation and more differentiation am i clear now you imagine if arrest is at early stage if arrest differentiation arrest is at early stage but proliferation is going on these cells are early cells they will proliferate too rapidly and there's severe loss of function yes person will develop the disease very rapidly opposite to that another person develops the leukemic disease or neoplastic situation of these cells but arrest is not early arrest is for that late stage in this case if arrest is at late stage what will happen cells will not be able to proliferate as much as early cells suppose early arrest this is relatively relatively late arrest here cells puppy grow a little bit may become like a small doggies but never become full adult doggies you are understanding now they proliferate more they proliferate less they are not functional at all they may do a little bit function because they have little differentiation towards normal what do you think which is more dangerous disease the first one or the second one first one are you sure yes yes so because if arrest is at very early stage and cells are highly undifferentiated they will proliferate more rapidly and patient will clinically deteriorate over weeks and month we say this is acute leukemias but if arrest is at later stage cells are proliferating at slow pace right and functional deficiency is not so severe and patient even without treatment sometimes lives for months and years we say it is chronic state so the real difference between acute leukemias and chronic leukemias or danger uh, highly you can say aggressive lymphoma and less aggressive lymphoma is that no not time duration the oh, stage sure. the stage at which differentiation arrest occurs if differentiation arrest occur very early and cell wide spread in the bone marrow and the blood we say acute leukemias yes. if arrest occur very early but these wild puppy make a like a butter cohesive mass we say very aggressive lymphoma that's right is that right but if this arrest occur at a later stage it means malignant cell has done some degree of differentiation and proliferation capacity is not too aggressive in that case patient clinical situation will deteriorate gradually and if it is wide spread in the bone marrow and spread into blood because it slowly present slowly progressive disease if it is leukemic presentation we call it chronic leukemias but if these cells even though arrest in differentiation is late arrest in differentiation is late right but still they make a mass right they will make a mass which will kill the person very gradually so we call it indolent lymphoma less aggressive lymphoma or indolent lymphomas so this concept is clear that some of the leukemia the lymphomas some of the leukemia the lymphomas they are very aggressive and some of the lymphomas and leukemias are less aggressive the real difference is what difference is arrest at the differentiation if differentiation has been arrested too early it is acute leukemia or aggressive lymphoma or if arrest in differentiation is at later stage of development of cell then it is chronic, chronic leukemias or less aggressive lymphomas depending upon tissue distribution am i clear now we go back 
and we talk about lymphoid neoplasia. Now what could lymphoid neoplasias, the latest classification has come, number one, early cells, two early cells are, if malignant cells, if malignant cells look like very small puppies, then we say they look like precursor cell. They look like precursor cell. So that is called precursor B cell. If cell become malignant here, but it has some features, some features of B cell. But arrest is very early. Then we say it, yes, precursor B cell, what? Lymphoma or leukemia? Precursor B cells. It means the cell which has become what? Malignant. It was trying to become a B cell but never became B cell. It was trying to become a B cell but no. never became B cell. So this will be precursor B cell what? Lymphoma or leukemia? Depending upon behavior. So we will call it precursor B cell leukemia. It is written in books like this oblique lymphoma. Right, because both will be treated somewhat similarly. So the first category according to World Health Organization is precursor B cell neoplasia. Precursor B cell neoplasia, one example is B cell, secondly, if it is precursor cell, if it is early cell, it will be acute or chronic? Acute. So we can call it acute precursor B cell, acute. Automatically, of course, it is precursor. It is very early. So acute precursor B cell lymphoma, leukemia or we simply call it pre-B A-L-L pre-B cell leading to acute lymphoblastic what? Lymphoma. lymphoma leukemia it stands for both lymphoma leukemia is that right? precursor B cell then there should be if arrest is here then it is precursor B cell or mature B cell? Mature. so if neoplasia occur at this stage it will be precursor B cell because it is going to the B cell line yes. but at very early stage it is category 1 precursor B cell right but if it is here okay if it is, if it is here that cell is to some degree differentiated and proliferation rate is slow it is relatively less aggressive right then the term which will be used these cells are usually in the peripheral circulation such cells so we call it peripheral B cell what we we'll call it? Okay. Yes, peripheral B cell. What? Chronic. Of course, it will be chronic, but peripheral B cell neoplasia. Okay, don't get confused. Peripheral B cell neoplasia. neoplasia. Now, there are precursor B cell neoplasia. Here, peripheral B cell neoplasia. Yes. Here. Is it difficult? Or there can be, yes. Yes. Precursor T cell or NK cell. Or Peripheral T cell and NK cell. Am I clear? So, what we can write here? Next category number three is what? Yes, please. Precursor T cell or NK cell, natural killer cell, neoplasia. Right? And other categories? One, two, three, and four. Yes, what is this? Peripheral. Yes. T cell or NK cell neoplasia. Now, it means here it is precursor B story. Here it is precursor T. Both of them will be less aggressive or more aggressive? Precursor. Arrest is earlier or later? So precursor B and precursor T. Both of them are highly aggressive they will kill the patient if untreated very rapidly so both of them should be acute or chronic acute yes so this will be also acute now if it is leukemic or lymphomic we can also call this acute lymphoblastic leukemia lymphoma this is also acute lymphoblastic leukemia lymphoma the difference of this and this is what it is pre-B and this is pre-T T. right now again repeat it here all the lymphoid neoplasia now we are doing the classification of WHO classification of lymphoid. lymphoid neoplasia no need to memorize it's very simple there will be you talk about B cell series or T cell and K cell series B cell may be precursor cell then mature peripheral cells T cells and NK cell may be precursor cell then 
mature peripheral cells. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Then it becomes more easy. If we say there are B cell, actually heading should be here. Precursor B cell neoplasia. Precursor B cell neoplasia, the classical example is pre-BALL. What is pre-BALL? Pre-B category, acute. What is this? Lymphoblast. Of course, if it is precursor, it should be lymphoblast. Because it should be rapidly proliferating blastic cell. Acute and clinically acute, cytologically blast. And the way it spread, it may be leukemia or lymphoma. It's so simple to decode. Right? If a patient has lymphoblastic cell, patient is rapidly deteriorating, and on the cell there are markers of B cell, we call it pre B A L L. Or we can say pre B acute lymphoblastic what? Leukemia or lymphoma depending upon spread in the body. Is that right? And here now come. What is this? Precursor T cell or natural killer cells are less common. So we will focus on precursor T cell. Precursor T cell, what? Precursor T cell will be acute or chronic? Also acute. We are talking about this situation. Precursor T cell, what? Acute. What is this? Lymphoblast. First of all, it is lymphoblast. Now, this is also lymphoblast. This is also lymphoblast. The difference is this lymphoblast with some features of markers of B cell line. This is lymphoblast with some markers of T cell line. You understand it? These markers are very important because treatment here is different and here is different. Right? Prognosis is different. Right? Age group affect, afflicted by these diseases are different. Right? So just saying a person is suffering with leukemia does not mean anything. No, it means. So you, it simply means that uh, you are a very poor doctor. If you know only this thing that your patient has leukemia, what is this diagnosis? It's a poor man's diagnosis. You should know. Leukemia only tell one thing, okay? There is some malignant cells by hematopoietic precursor system spreading into bone marrow and blood. But that is not enough to treat. Modern times, for treatment we should know that this leukemia is B cell, T cell, or myelid cell, or what cell? Yes. Because different cells with different type of genetic abnormalities are treated in different ways. That's right. Doctors 30 years back were lucky. No one knew these things. But now you need to learn. No, we are lucky. We can help better. No, our patients are lucky. Yes. If we learn it properly, we can treat them well. Yes. Right? Now, so pre-B cell, no, okay, pre-B cell neoplasia, what are these? Classical than pre-B ALL. Then pre-T cell, natural killer cell neoplasia, T cell or natural killer cell, classical example of this disease is pre T A L L or pre N K A L L because pre N K A L L is very rare. Forget about that. Pre T A L L, right? Or simply in the books they write B A L L and T A L L. Is that right? These two I will discuss in detail in later part of the lectures, right? Then there are peripheral B cell neoplasia. What are these? Peripheral B cell neoplasia. Now peripheral B cell means they are mature cells or immature cells. Mature cells. If they are mature cells, they should be small cell or large cell? Large. Small cells. Large. Let me tell you, let me tell you. Hold on, hold on. I understand you are now too much stuck with the puppies and dogs. Uh, the thing is that cells are really not puppies. <laughs> right? Uh, immature cells are big. And when cells become mature, they become small. small. Right. Is that right? Cells which proliferate are big. They are blastic cells. Is that right? And when they become mature, they become small. When I say, in my hand I have a lymphoblast, it means two things. And if I say, in my this hand, I have lymphocyte. This is what? Lymphoblast. lymphoblast. And if I say, this is what? Lymphocyte. You should automatically understand few things. Number one, if it is lymphoblast, it should be mature cell. If it is lymphocyte, it should be mature, mature cell. If it is lymphoblast, it should be Big larger. Cell. Right? And if it is lymphocyte, it should be smaller. smaller because it is resting cell. This is not resting, it's busy to proliferate. Its DNA should be excessive, RNA should be a lot, and ribosomes and all activities more. So, lymphoblast is immature, lymphocyte is mature, lymphoblast is larger, lymphocyte is smaller, smaller. 
a lymphoblast if it become malignant it will produce very aggressive behavior if if malignancy come with more differentiation lymphocytic malignancy usually it is less usually exceptions are there usually it is relatively less aggressive am i clear yes, now after uh, having this concept we come to this peripheral b cell neoplasia when i say there is peripheral b cell not precursor b cell so it should be smaller cell or larger cell smaller cell smaller. yes smaller. smaller cell right and if it is making a wide spread diffuse bone marrow and other then small cell leukemia and if it is making a one single mass buttery situation lymphoma so one example of peripheral b cell neoplasia one example is yes it can be chronic lymphocytic leukemia oblique small cell lymphoma one if i tell you that there is neoplasia of peripheral b cells right it must be small cell this should be lymphocytic it should be lymphocytic it will be acute or chronic chronic so its name can be if it is leukemic style then we say chronic of course it is chronic because it is well what different relatively mature not well mature relatively mature so it is chronic what lymphoblast or lymphocyte lymphocyte yes lymphocyte 